if you're catching the early show. Thank you so much for taking a little time out of a beautiful evening outdoors and spending it with us. Unless, of course, maybe you've got a TV on the patio. Who knows? Thanks for being a part of the program nonetheless. We've got some tweaks to your weather forecast, but it's still on par with what we had in store from 24 hours ago. But 24 hours does mean change, of course, in Kentucky weather-wise, and I'll outline that for you in more detail. We still look for temperatures to fall right around the 70-degree mark for daytime highs over the course of your weekend. Nighttime lows will also follow suit and get close to the 50-degree mark as well. I'll tell you what I know, and when we'll next see some precipitation, but it's going to feel like fall, and it's going to be gorgeous. It's going to be calm, and it's going to be cool, and it's just going to be comfortable. And those are three good C's to start a forecast with. I'll talk about it more in just a few moments. On tonight's program, I sat down with the local drug-free communities coordinator earlier today. We talked about an event coming up this weekend and how it comes at the time of a great deal of reasons to celebrate, but also some other obstacles presented to the organization which has so faithfully served the McGoffa County area for 10 years now. I encourage you to stay, stay tuned for that report. Sagersville Police Officer Mike Nichols tells us about another drug-related arrest that just further drives home the point that you just never know what's traveling the roads and how dangerous it can be. Two adults, a small child in the vehicle, and I'll tell you what he discovered in just a few moments. The Johnson County Sheriff's Department has forwarded me a couple of press releases as well. And we'll start off with just a brief update on a couple of things happening elsewhere in the Commonwealth. One, the latest candidate for governor. As was promised on yesterday, Kentucky's Agriculture Commissioner and Republican James Comer has officially entered the race for governor of Kentucky. That election, of course, next year. He did so on the grounds of his home turf in Tompkinsville, Kentucky, and he also revealed his running mate today, Republican State Senator Chris McDaniel. Now, this widens the race, of course, to another candidate. He joins the only other Republican who has thus far entered, that being a Louisville Metro Councilman by the name of Hal Heiner. So far, one Democrat has also only joined the race, that being our state's Attorney General, Jack Conway. The election is 2015. And of course, we're all focused on this coming November's election, but on a state level, this will be the next big event. It is also reminded to us that if you have not registered for the election, you have until October the 6th to do so. The other report before we make our way back to local headlines concerns a father and son from Kentucky. They're from Bardstown and they're the subject of a multi-state investigation here in the Commonwealth as well as the state of Oregon after their car was discovered with a lot of hiking equipment inside, abandoned near a popular hiking area near Mount Hood, and they've not been seen for days. Days that have actually turned into weeks. They have not been seen since sometime around the middle of August, at least confirmed by friends and neighbors who live in the Bargetown area. To your right is John Kevin Wood. He's 59. His son, Jason Anthony Wood, to the left, 32, are both from Bargetown. They both live together. And the silver 2012 Kia Rio four-door car with Kentucky tags registered, I believe, to the father, was recently discovered. The Oregon Department of Transportation reported the abandoned car to police, and a trooper confirmed it on the 5th of this month, just this past Friday. The trooper also noticed upon investigation a lot of hiking equipment in the car belonging to the woods. John Wood is described as white, about 6 foot 1, 170 pounds, gray hair, blue eyes. His son Jason, white, around 5 feet 9, 140 pounds, brown hair, blue eyes. Now, the state of Kentucky has as well as Oregon, entered the two men into the National Crime Information Center database. Authorities in Oregon also conducting their investigation as well. It's now a joint investigation on behalf of all authorities involved. So far, authorities in the Hood River County area have conducted two separate thorough searches of the area. But other than the car, the obvious license plates attached, and the items inside, they have no real leads or evidence in the case. I've got local headlines coming up after these words. There's an unlimited selection of new and pre-owned vehicles right at your fingertips with nine acres of inventory and seven different franchises all at one location. Hutch, Chevrolet, Buick, GMC, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram. 
Call Chevy Buick and GMC at 297-4066 or Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram at 297-5066 where selection, satisfaction, and service after you're sold are all guaranteed. If you have been in a serious wreck, do you really think that you are in good hands of the insurance companies when you have lost wages, medical bills, and pain and suffering from your head to your toes? The answer is no. If you want to truly be in good hands, give me a call. I'm attorney Donald Wayne McFarland. Let me put my 20 years of experience in working to protect the rights of injured people to work for you. 349-9000. Spend less time waiting or in line for your prescriptions or refills and get the care you need with the quality and convenience that matters most at Parkway Pharmacy, your exclusive provider of the finest in vitamins and supplements by Windmill Vitamins. Come in or drive through 8.30 till 6.30 Monday through Friday or call Parkway Pharmacy, 349-4400. Got company coming? Looking to visit Sagersville and family or just get away? Then come stay with us in one of two newly restored and uniquely appointed lofts over downtown, filled with history throughout. With a luxurious touch, king beds, free Wi-Fi, HD TV, and enough comfort to sleep one to ten guests, book your stay at the Mortimer Lofts by emailing toreachsue at yahoo.com, find them on Facebook, or call 349-3299. Remember when they invented the peanut butter cup? Bringing peanut butter and chocolate together. Pure genius. Well, the Sonam Enduro has done the same thing for wireless. Right now at Appalachian Wireless, you'll find the tough, dependable Sonam Enduro. This flip phone is great for the job or weekend warrior, but you can also access the internet and take great pictures with a two megapixel camera. Get it now, the best of both worlds, just like the peanut butter cup. Appalachian Wireless, better service, bigger savings. Sagersville National lets you go mobile with their new banking app. That's right, you can view your account and balance, transfer money, pay bills, and yes, deposit checks right from your phone from wherever you are. Just download the Sagersville National Bank app on your Android, iPad, iPhone, or other device. Any phone that can connect to the internet has the capability, and you can start saving time and money today with Sagersville National Bank's new mobile app. Wherever you are, we're there for you at Sagersville National Bank. Regardless of where you want to ride, you could be riding on a brand new Kawasaki or Polaris for less at M&M Power Sports in Staffordsville. New Kawasaki's for the dirt, the street, or both, and ATVs and side-by-sides for every stage of enthusiasts to fish, hunt, haul, or play. And with rebates up to $1,300 and financing as low as 3.99%, it's never been easier to ride it, buy it, and start your next adventure at Kentucky's Power Sports Authority since 1964, M&M Power Sports. In traffic-related news, a fatal auto accident in Pikeville yesterday that was feared to be that way from the onset of the investigation. Several people were injured after a 10-wheel truck, reportedly the driver of which lost control of the vehicle, just near the red light at the Island Creek intersection. Now, the vehicle flipped onto its side and then collided with at least four vehicles that we know of. As a result, 58-year-old Walter Gearhart has been pronounced dead after yesterday's accident. It happened early yesterday morning, sometime around 8 a.m. Several others were injured. No update on their condition at this hour. A little closer to home, the Johnson County Sheriff's Department has forwarded me the following press releases about two collisions that they had to work on the same day, that being yesterday as they first responded to a two-vehicle collision on US-23 at Turner Branch Hill. A vehicle driven by Sonny Ward, 21 of Lexington, was turning northbound on US-23 and traveled a short distance and tried to change lanes. Ward pulled into the path of another vehicle driven by Clarissa Wells, 35 of Sagersville. This is Wells' vehicle here in front of you. Wells reportedly applied her brakes and skidded about 81 feet before impact with the vehicle driven by Ward. Ward's vehicle was a 2012 Chevrolet pickup truck and was struck from behind, causing the vehicle to skid into the southbound lane and overturn, as you see here. It came to rest in the slow lane of US-23 South. Wells' vehicle came to rest in the northbound lane of US-23. Wells, we're told, was taken to the Palm Hall Medical Center for treatment. Ward and his passenger, 35-year-old Dustin Porter of Prestonsburg, reported no injuries at the time of the collision and refused EMS treatment on scene. 
a little later, a less serious auto accident. The Sheriff's Department responding to a two-vehicle collision also on 23. This is the intersection of Route 201. Traffic was stalled when a blue Chevrolet Blazer driven by Judy Lee Van who's collided with the rear end of a Toyota Sienna driven by Mason Allen of Painesville. The Sheriff's Department reports that Allen was stopped in traffic when the vehicle driven by Van Hoos changed lanes and then couldn't stop in time to avoid the collision. Up next, Sagersville City Police Officer Mike Nichols tells us about a case that he opened up Sunday evening here in Sagersville. A disturbing situation, he says, after he discovered two adults, a male and a female, the female the mother of a small child in the vehicle, both adults under the influence as they were traveling through McGoffin County on the Mountain Parkway. I had been following this uh, vehicle, uh, watching these people. They was weaving in and out of traffic and on the road. And uh, whenever they got out of the vehicle, their VIP, I, I stopped them VIP with them. Uh, the driver appeared to be under the influence. And after upon investigation, he went in the store. I asked him to step out. Got him to step out. He uh, he admitted that he had shot up oxycodone. Uh, he had a uh, firearm. Uh, in his vehicle. He had needles in his vehicle. He had uh, cans with uh, drug residue in, in the vehicle where he'd been shooting off of. Uh, he also had a four-year-old child in the vehicle unrestrained. Uh, he was also charged for endangering the welfare of a minor. Uh, he, uh, he had a passenger, a female passenger. Uh, she had got out of the vehicle, went in the store. When she seen me talking to him, she grabbed the child, went back to the bathroom. As I, before I could get in there, I heard the mold flush, so it's untelling what she might have done. Um, I got her out, was talking to her. Uh, they all gave me consent to look in the vehicle. And uh, after upon looking in the vehicle, I found uh, Schedule II narcotics, oxycodone, uh, spoons where they had mixed it up and was shooting out of the spoons, cotton swabs, so forth. Uh, she was charged also with endangering the welfare of a minor. It's her four-year-old son that uh, there was needles laying around the child. There was drug paraphernalia laying around the child. Uh, the child was released to their dad, his, his dad, at the end by uh, social services, DPP. Uh, she's been charged with possession of a controlled substance, first degree, first offense, which is a felony. And so is the other guy. He's just charged with possession as well. We're having a lot of trouble with this Mount Parkway, the drugs coming in the parkway. And, and uh, all I can ask is just people be careful when they're people in McGoffin County and anybody passes through because it's uh, it just seems like it's every night that we're getting something off the park though. I've got more local headlines in just a few moments. Right now it's tonight's community calendar brought to you as always by McGoffin Farm Bureau. And it's a birthday wish to begin. Happy birthday, happy, happy birthday to Angie Arnett from a host of friends and family. Happy birthday to you. And this is notification that North McGoffin Elementary Site-Based Council will meet in a regular session meeting tomorrow, 4 o'clock, in the school's conference room. And Principal Jill Howard says everyone is invited and welcome to attend. The next diabetes education class, Living Well with Diabetes, they'll be discussing It Takes a Family, Living with Diabetes, a Family Approach. It's free, and it's at the McGoffin County Health Department. And it's 10 o'clock this Thursday morning. Living with diabetes, something that all of us have to do directly or indirectly to some degree. And their next diabetic education class is Thursday morning at 10 at your McGoffin County Health Department. And Recovery Rocks, I'm going to tell you more about it in just a second. But for now, a quick reminder, it is this weekend and it is Saturday. It's in the Ramey Park with live music, food, and fun at the shelter at 2 o'clock for Recovery Rocks. Our friends at the Elk Creek Free Will Baptist Church have put together a fun horse show for this weekend, Saturday, down at the Equestrian Park on Liberty Road in Morgan County. It's 37 classes, $10 to enter per class, $20 for the championship classes, uh, first through fifth place finishes. And I've got a number for you that I just now realized I don't have on my screen. What was I thinking? 349-1163, 349-1163 to find out more. But it's a horse show starting 5 o'clock this Saturday, rain or shine. And this just in, the Sagersville High School graduating class of 1974 has a reunion set for this Saturday, 4.30 till 9.30. 
It's at the farm of Mike Reed on Cow Creek. To find out more, call Melissa Rudd at 859-303-6464, or you can find her on Facebook with the Sagreensville High School Class of 74. Reunion this Saturday at Mike Reed's farm down on Cow Creek. And if you've got a birthday, anniversary, a calendar announcement, this is exactly how you get it to your news today for free, I might add. Turning to funeral service announcements brought to you by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. 82-year-old Virginia Bernice Howard Dyer of Mill Branch passed away on Sunday, preceded in death by her husband Langley. She survived by sons Gerald Dyer and Gregory Dyer, as well as two brothers, James Wendell Howard and Homer Eugene Howard. Funeral services for Virginia are going to be held tomorrow at 11 o'clock in the morning from the Sagersville Funeral Home Chapel. Visitation continues this evening. Burial will follow in the Dyer Family, family Cemetery on Bear Branch in Sagersville. Once again, services for Virginia Bernice Howard Dyer, 82, tomorrow morning at 11. And services are also going to be held tomorrow in McGoffin County for Lucy Jane Montgomery Arnett, 79, of Jim Arnett Branch, who passed away on Sunday, preceded in death by her husband, Noah Denver. She survived by daughters Georgiana Carroll, Rosemary Arnett, and Patricia Stewart. Visitation is this evening and until services tomorrow afternoon, once again at 1, all of which from the Sagersville Funeral Home, with burial to follow services at the Arnett Cemetery on Jim Arnett Branch. Save big at Premier Auto, an 02 Hyundai Sonata, only $37.50. An 07 Pontiac G5, only $39.50. And an 09 Buick LaCrosse, just $99.50. An 06 Rhino, only 1,200 miles, just $69.50. And 100 miles per gallon, no driver's license and no insurance needed. New scooters cut $500 to just $9.95 at Premier Auto in Paintsville. Satisfy your hunger and get a great deal on some famous home cooking at your Sagersville Lee's Famous Recipe, where we started the under five buck daily specials. On Wednesdays, it's our three piece dinners, famous crispy or roast any way you like it. Get a leg, thigh, and a wing, two sides, and a biscuit for only $4.99 or $3.99 after four o'clock, and you can get a breast, thigh, and a leg for just a buck more. All at where we cater, gatherings big or small, your Sagersville Lee's. Get ready, baby, or get baby ready with a simply adorable selection at the Seasonal Shop with bibs and blankets and bags, onesies and jammies, the cutest of outfits and matching accessories for thing one, thing two, or thing three. Hooded bath towels by Zucchini, bubble bath paints, blocks, bears, puzzles, picture frames, and shelves and shelves and shelves more. Find an absolutely perfect gift for the most precious of gifts at Fraser's Prater Drugs Seasonal Shop in downtown Salyersville. <laughs> At the end of every race, Mark Martin hangs up his driving gloves. He hangs up his fire suit. Whoa. And he hangs up his helmet. Whoa. Which is why he picks up his phone and opens the ER Extra app. The app shows ER Extra wait times, locations, and more. It's the one safeguard Mark Martin is never without. ER Extra at Paul B. Hall Regional Medical Center. Extra fast, extra easy, extra great. Wheel alignments, oil changes, brakes, suspension work, and tires. Thousands of tires by all the major manufacturers, all in stock and at incomparable prices. All backed with 33 years of service and experience, the area's largest tire selection, and six months no interest at Conley's in Paintsville. With a low-rate mortgage from Citizens National Bank, you can downsize your mortgage payment, not your home. New home or refi, Citizens gives you the personal service you deserve. And no gotcha fine print. Just low rates. Stop by your nearest branch to apply today. Citizens National Bank. We take banking personally. Equal housing lender, member FDIC. 
It's an ages old battle that rages on. Apple or pumpkin? And now you can decide which pie makes the best blizzard treat. Taste them both for a limited time at your Sagersville DQ, home of the three buck breakfast and the five buck lunch, and where breakfast is served hot Monday through Thursday, six till 11, and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday until noon, and where everything else is served all day, every day. Your Sagersville Dairy Queen. Ask and you shall receive. Oh, I wish it was always just that easy. But in this case, it was. Last night on the community calendar, I mentioned that the local Kentucky ASAP Board and Drug Free Communities Office had set a Recovery Rocks celebration for this Saturday in the Sagersville Ramey Park. And that was all I knew at the time. Well, almost all I knew at the time. But upon seeing that, viewer and Drug Free Communities Coordinator Caroline Isaac called today. She called to forward on some information. I followed up with a let's do an interview. And we did find out more about Recovery Rocks and what all they are celebrating on the local and national level this Saturday. There's a whole lot to be said about this Saturday's Recovery Rocks celebration in the Ramey Park in Sagersville. It marks the seventh annual local event honoring strides made towards recovery by many in the community who chose to seek help as well as a quarter of a century for the national event. It's National Recovery Month, and we just wanted to get in with the celebration of the nation. And there's events happening all over the United States. And this is the 25th anniversary for National Recovery Month. So it's been going on a long time. This Saturday is actually more of a celebration time to allow people to come together, to support one another, to share the stories. Uh, we are gonna be handing out materials that will help them in their recovery, like 12-step materials and devotionals and, and things that help them. Um, of course, we're gonna provide food, lots of games, live music, maybe some karaoke. It's just gonna be a fun day. This weekend's event comes amid a time when finances, like in most areas, are a struggle. Funding, as I've mentioned before, for drug-free communities is coming to an end. In fact, next week will be the last week of 10 years of service for the local organization. Funds that supported two full-time staff, including Isaac, who in turn oversaw the implementation of Unite Clubs in our schools, participation in national awareness campaigns for things such as underage drinking, cleaning out your medicine cabinet, National Recovery Month, and more, all alongside countless organized events for our youth and community. But she says she's optimistic and there is still support and obviously a need. McGoffin County actually uh, is coming together there is a lot of support as far as people volunteering, uh, you know, wanting to stay on board with the plan to address substance abuse. I'm thankful for that. Uh, as far as the money goes, the health department has stepped up and we will continue to have part-time leadership in our coalition work. Um, part of the community health plan is going to be substance abuse, so that makes the health department really engaged uh, for the f future months ahead. So. I expect we're going to keep active. It may not be quite as much going on, but we're not going to stop. We will continue our work. The services still remain. The coalition work still remains where people can volunteer. We will be needing more volunteers to keep education in the schools, to reach the uh, recovering people with aftercare services and, and that kind of thing. Actually, we're real strong right now with that. We have lots of support groups. We have lots of materials. We have support through UNITE for our aftercare community, and we are strong in McGoffin County. And an example of that support from left to right, in the back row, Brent Pratt is the assistant counselor for the Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center. Daniel Jeffries is the assistant resident director at the Kentucky Mission Bible Training Center. Larry Bennett is the local director of the REACH organization. Carolyn Isaac, coordinator for Kentucky ASAP and drug-free communities locally. Lorraine Holbrook, Outreach Staff and Drug-Free Communities. Amanda Howard Arnett is the Case Specialist with Drug Court. And Trevor Jacobs is the Case Manager with McGoffin County Drug Court. And in the front row, Sagersville Mayor Pete Shepard and McGoffin County Judge Executive Charles Harden. Some of the things you'll find this Saturday, well, free food, free soft drinks, games for the kids, a cornhole tournament, a tug-of-war event with recovery community versus law enforcement. Maybe you'll get even for that speeding ticket or, or not, <laughs> as well as special speakers, testimonies, and live music. That photograph taken from the signing of the proclamation that in part read and declared that back in 2012, 
Two and a half million people ages 12 or older receive specialty treatment for a substance abuse disorder, and over 34.1 million adults ages 18 or older received mental health services. That all according to the 2012 National Survey on Drug Use and Health. Saturday is Recovery Rocks, a celebration that you are invited to here in Sayersville. Well, now let me invite you to stick around and see what's happening weather-wise, where, oh, it oh so feels like fall, and we're deserving of some beautiful weather. We've got, for the most part, that in store for the entire forecast period. Still a bit like summer for the next 24 hours or so. Today, 62 to start, 88 to peak here at the newsroom, falling back to around 64 under partly cloudy skies tonight with a light southeast wind. So says your Licking Valley RECC forecast. Now, this gorgeous weather today takes us in tomorrow with continuing temperatures in the mid-80s. I suspect right around 85 degrees on your Wednesday under mostly sunny skies. I also suspect to see just nothing more than partly cloudy skies later on in the evening and a nighttime low of right around 69. Uh, you might see mostly cloudy skies, but I think partly cloudy early. We will see clouds during the overnight, but really that's not going to be until later on Thursday morning that those clouds are going to really get thick, 3 or 4 in the a.m., and then some showers may start to fall, and that will be the onset of um, not-so-nice changeover. This next cold front is going to be a good one. It's going to put temperatures right around 79 on Thursday, and they're going to continue to fall, I think, throughout the afternoon. Showers and thunderstorms likely across the board Thursday into your Thursday evening. Friday, a lingering chance of just some showers, no stormy weather, but look at the temperatures. They fall into fall. A high of 72, a low of 57 on your Friday. Saturday, 70 even degrees is what we're expecting right now. A low of 20 degrees less, partly sunny skies. That really 20% chance of showers Friday and Saturday, that's just in there because, well, that's what the computers say. I'm not buying into it. I see some pretty much dry weather thereafter. Sunday, we'll wrap up the weekend mostly sunny, 71 and 50, still on the cool side of life. And then we'll start off next week with some more conditions in the low 70s, uh, low 50s for night for daytime highs, nighttime lows. A beautiful way to start off the weekend. A continued run at fall weather. I can't say that this is the last of the summertime weather, but it is for the foreseeable future. And that's the last of the program for this evening. We've got a lot of news to cover. Pumpkin patch footage is on its way. We'll get to that and a whole lot of other stories. And plus, an announcement that I've just received word of, uh, tens of million dollars for a project just approved for McGoffin County. This is hot off the press. I'll have that report for you tomorrow as well. And it's more news that you'll only see with me. So we hope to see you then. For now, enjoy your Tuesday evening. And a good night, everybody.